All right, let's take a look at this problem together. It's just two blocks connected by a pulley as shown. And it gives us that they're given in terms of their weight. They're actually given already as weights, not as masses. They're connected by a massless string on a surface that's frictionless. And we want to know what's the acceleration of the 35 Newton block. All right, so two masses, probably two free body diagrams. So this is going to be my block A, and this is going to be block B. So block A has a free body diagram that looks like this. It's got a normal force, a weight force, and a tension force. Block B, on the other hand, has a free body diagram that looks like this. And I don't know why I drew a line over the top of it. It's just block B. It has a free body diagram that has a tension force pulling up on it, and it has a weight force pulling down on it. So now I have my free body diagrams. I'm going to set a coordinate system. And I'm going to set my coordinate system to be positive x, positive y, positive x to the right, positive y up for block A. And to be consistent, I'm going to do positive y to the right and positive x to be down for block B. And really what I'm, why I'm doing that is because if block A moves to the right, block B moves down. So if block A is po moves in the positive x, block B will move in the positive x as well. All right, let's draw some, uh, let's draw some Newton second law stuff or write down some Newton second law equations. It's traditionally how we solve these problems. So in the x direction, I'm going to see that I have a tension force, positive tension force, because it pulls to the right for block A. And that's going to be equal to my mass times the acceleration. In the y direction, I'm going to just skip it for right now. I may need it, but I'm going to take a guess and I'm not going to need it. So I'm going to move on to block B. So Newton's second law for block B in the x direction says that I have a positive MBG. I have my weight force pulling down. I have my tension force pulling up, and this is going to give me give rise to my acceleration in, of object B. Well, I look at these two equations, and I can see that I have a tension is equal to something, and I have this tension here. I don't care about the tension. Problem doesn't ask for it. It really wants to know this acceleration. So I'm going to substitute in this equation over here and rewrite this. So I have mb times g, that guy over there, minus my tension force, but my tension force is nothing more than ma times a, and this is going to be mb times a. mbg minus, oh no, is equal to mba plus maa mbg over mb plus ma is equal to my acceleration. Factor of a factors out, and I divide by what is left. So I have mb plus ma times a, and that mb plus ma comes down over here. So it just says that I have my weight force, my weight force of object B, and object B is 35 newtons over the mass of object A plus object B. Well, if I assume that G is approximately equal to 10 meters per squ uh, second squared, that means MB plus MA is 7. This is approximately equal to 7 kilograms, and this is approximately equal to 3.5 kilograms. It's just what their masses are to give us those weight forces. So 7 plus 3.5 is actually 3.5 times 3. You know, well, why did you just do that? Well, I can see that 3.5 times 3, that this factor right here is nothing more than 10 
over 3. So 10 over 3, Newton's this is a 10, and there's a factor of 3. I should actually keep my algebra straight, but this is 10 over 3 Newtons. So I get that this is approximately equal to 3.3 meters per second squared. And if we kind of look at this, one object of mass, one mass unit is being pulled down. The force for this whole acceleration, this whole system, is one, or one weight unit pulling down. But it's pulling three total mass units. So if it was in free fall, one weight unit would give us 9.8. It's got to move three mass units. So I think this looks like the right answer. 3.3 meters per second squared.